It wasn't too much of a wait before the third train of the day was approaching, with another war bonnet and a CSX-9 and YN2 paint. Quite the lash up if you ask me. Today's rail fanning trip is part two of my spring break rail fanning extravaganza, and I'm headed up to Wichita, Kansas, which has a super busy main line and a virtual rail fan camera. Here we're crossing the bridge that's right next to the old Santa Fe Depot, a favorite rail fanning spot of mine, and it seems we've already caught a train. Don't worry though, this isn't the last you'll see of this intermodal. As we rolled northward, I couldn't help but admire the scenery. Just beautiful. Remember when I said that this isn't the last you'll see of that intermodal? Well check this out. By sheer coincidence I ended up getting a pacing shot of the train. When we got to Wichita, my first stop was at the Great Plains Transportation Museum, a really neat place. I highly recommend visiting if you find yourself in Wichita. At the museum, I caught the first train of the day from the cab of Santa Fe number 93, one of the museum's display pieces. Okay, that first ends in... Or no, no, they're made by General. And then I went down to the ground to wave at all the people on the virtual rail fan camera. <coughs> this is also around the same time I caught the second train of the day, an intermodal with a war bonnet in second. Lots of honks today. There was a good amount of rail fanners out and about on the museum grounds. It wasn't too much of a wait before the third train of the day was approaching, with another war bonnet and a CSX-9 and YN2 paint. Quite the lash up if you ask me.
After that train left, I went over to a spot on ground level, where I caught a Union Pacific manifest working the yard. back and forth and back and forth for a while, and just when I thought he was going to get on his way, an intermodal came screaming past. train hadn't budged. Then the train finally got on its way with several classic Missouri Pacific hoppers, something I've never seen on BNSF trains. Just when I thought the train was almost over, I realized there was a full-size manifest behind the coke cars. How awesome this was too, because there were two Golden West service boxcars. I've only caught a Golden West service boxcar one time before this, and these were a real treat. There was also this C&W hopper that was in pretty good condition. As 
soon as I thought this train couldn't amaze me any more, a mid-train DPU came thundering around the curve. This was a first for me. and it was followed immediately by a Golden West service hopper. I didn't even know these existed until I saw this one. The end of the train was brought up with these hydrochloric acid tank cars, and the whole thing was soon gone. Then I took the opportunity to check out the scenery around me. There's lots of industry here, including a scrap metal facility, several co-ops, and a petroleum plant. I also noticed these two jeeps just waiting for their next job. There's also a BNSF yard to the left and a Union Pacific yard to the right. I expected a lot of rail traffic today, and boy did this line deliver.